the gentle shepherd, the subject of shepherdology has been on our minds and on our plates. We've talked about the finding of the sheep, the finding of the lost sheep, the, um, and then the leading, how that God leads us. Uh, he leads us in the psalm by still waters. And he restores our soul in the keeping of us and the feeding of us. Uh, he spreads a table in the presence of of our enemies, and he he protects us. God is the the protector. Uh, anybody remember what the message was last week? Uh, find the sheep, feed the sheep, lead the sheep, keep the sheep, and what? What? Shear shear the sheep. I didn't bring one of my little pictures in of shearing the sheep, but um, that was a concept. The difference between shearing and and fleecing, and how that God has a productivity and a plan in this thought of uh, shepherdology. We're asking all of us to be involved in hearing the call uh, to shepherd the sheep and be involved in the discipleship, involved in the reaching out and the touching of lost lives and in the, uh, the caring in the nursery for the young ones and the bringing up and the praying for the local church to be a home, a church home, uh, from the cradle to the grave, from, from the youngest of Graceland here, hearing these songs come into her ears, amen, for the glory of God. And sometimes I just look at her uh, in church and I wonder, what in the world is she thinking? What in the world is she thinking? I, 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 I wondered that as I was responsible uh, yesterday to babysit her for a little while, and, and she woke up, and I, I love to be the hero, you know, when I get up, and I didn't notice anything um, of smells or odors or anything like that, but, but she, you know, was glad to see g and so we had a great time. I brought her downstairs then, and, um, and, and, you know, what is she thinking? She's jabbering away to me, and I'm jabbering back to her. I have no idea what she's saying, but when she brought the whole case of diapers over to me, <laughs> I had an idea what she was thinking. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking that. Wow. Um, the nursery, from the cradle to the grave. Uh, from the newlywed to the nearly dead. <laughs> God puts an assembly of believers. He, he, he calls it a sheepfold and, and, and assembles us together where we can meet the needs of one another and bless one another in this thing called shepherding. Shepherding in a godly spiritual way as a, as a flock of God's choosing. What a, what a blessing. What a privilege that we have and that we share together, brought in and found uh, by our good shepherd and then led and then fed and protected and sheared. And, 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 and today we're just gonna, just gonna focus on um, this Psalm, Psalm 23. We read it, um, beautiful passage of scripture standing out for us. I had thought, I had thought that um, uh, I could, preach on the whole psalm, had this outline worked out that went 85 miles long, and we would be here till probably evening. And, and then, I, then I got to the first phrase, the Lord is my shepherd. And I, I, I wonder if we, could, if we could just be blessed by that today. Uh, we can be blessed by the whole of Scripture, Amen. And we can be blessed by the little tiny chunk of Scripture, the little phrase of Scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. Wow. I wonder if you could uh, just open your heart to receive the blessing of this little phrase in Scripture, the Lord is my shepherd. Um, consider with me, first of all, the immensity of this thought. The Lord, the capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah God, the God of the universe. 
the only one true God. And I'd like you to think about God in the immensity as we think about this God then, then coming and caring and touching the individual uh, person. The Lord is my shepherd. Consider the immensity, God the Father. This is, this is the rejected one. Who is Lord over me, says the worldly crowd, says the secular crowd. And in rebellion today, they reject everything that the Bible stands for and that God is. And, 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 and yet this, this God just patiently waits and, and judgment awaits. And, 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 and one day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And, and here is this, uh, the, the God, uh, the Father. And then God the Son, the great shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Wonderfully and biblically in this phrase is found the deity of Christ and how that, that God the Father uh, is the shepherd. He is the shepherd of Israel, but then when the New Testament unfolds, and I love to say this when I speak of these themes of the deity of Christ and of the, of the Trinity and of the triunity of God, that, that, that there is no competition. <laughs> Amen? And there is no contradiction. There is no competition and there is no contradiction. For just the word L-O-R-D has the idea of this one who is from Bethlehem, Ephrata, who would be born there and then uh, would rise as the, the one who is to be king over all Israel. The one whose goings forth have been from old, Micah tells us, even from everlasting. And so the one who is born in Bethlehem, old little town of Bethlehem, is the one who is of old, even from everlasting. And so uh, try to figure it out and you'll blow a gasket, but try to disprove it, try not to believe it, and, and you'll end up in eternity in hell. That, that's, that, this is the deity of Christ. And found in the Lord is my shepherd is the deity of Jesus Christ. I, I believe that, that this is very precious, for we know that, that, that Jesus is the, the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. All these terms in the New Testament relate to Jesus Christ. And so when we think of this phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, we're talking about the God of the universe who has revealed himself in the scriptures. And Jehovah God is the chief shepherd is the great shepherd, is the good shepherd, is the shepherd that lays down his light for the sheep. Wow. The Lord is my shepherd. And then we don't have to look too far into the psalm where we could consider in thy rod and thy staff, they, what? Comfort me. And I'd love to just uh, uh, lead us to the blessed comfort of the Holy Spirit in this passage of scripture, and even in this phrase, the Lord is my shepherd. And we speak of the, the triune God, the triune God. God, God our Father, that great shepherd of the sheep, the Lord is my shepherd. This wonderful, profound link in this passage between the, the, the divine creator, immensity of God, and this human person, uh, little old me. That's the sermon. That's the sermon. If you can, if you can kind of get that, <laughs> the, the matching of the, the biggest and the greatest with the smallest and the tiniest. The, the little ant me. being able to cry.
cry out and reach out and know that the God of this universe has a relationship with me. David expresses this in the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. David, no stranger uh, to shepherding as he spent his nights watching, guarding over the sheep, knowing all of the symbolism here. And, and what a picture Old Testament and New Testament unfolds in this and, and, and that, that the God of the universe takes interest in me. An eternal relational possibility is here when David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, this is a look to who owns the sheep and who knows the sheep and who guides the sheep and who finds the sheep and who goes, goes after the sheep and who feeds the sheep. It's a realization and acknowledgement that sheep are, are you ready for this? Don't be offended. I'm one of them. Sheep are dumb. <laughs> sheep can't care for themselves. Sheep are totally dependent. They're totally dependent. And there's this beautiful shepherd's look in time and space of this speck, but yet this speck cries out to the God of the universe and says, the Lord is my shepherd. Other shepherds are present. Other shepherds and other flocks, the, the thought of the sheep being owned by a cruel and careless shepherd and the diseased and, 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 and malnutrition uh, sheep uh, maybe staring through the fence at, the, at this other one, the one who cries out, the Lord is my shepherd. And the, the shepherd of me, myself and I, the shepherd of the world, the flesh of the devil, uh, present and possible uh, amongst the sea of humanity and and. And there's a, there's a picture here. The Lord is my shepherd. Um, Psalm 79 in verse 13, it says, so, so we thy people and the sheep of thy pasture give thanks unto thee forever, and we will show forth thy praise to all generations. I, I just, got out my gadget Bible and put in sheep in hand and, and, and came up with a passage in Psalm 95. It says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. This is the, 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 the Maker God, the Creator God. That, that, that comes and, and has, has, has made us. We are, we are his. He has made us. And so our God is the God who made us. I'm, I'm glad that, that our God is, is not Allah. And some would say, well, let's just, um, you know, just, just have the welcoming hand and the first, uh, 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 the first uh, uh, suggestion to the uh, receiving of the refugees of a Christian organization not named in this message uh, is remember we serve the same God by different names. Not when you open the Bible. Not when you open the Old and the New Testament. Not when you talk about Jesus not only being the Son of God, but God the Son. This is the God of the Bible. He is the gentle shepherd that comes to lead us, and he is our strength from day to day. There is no other who is who is this shepherd? Who is this shepherd? Jesus is the gentle shepherd. And he's come as the prophesied one. He has come as the one in the fulfillment of even uh, the verses in Genesis. Let us make man in our own image. The immense God, the creator God. 
By him all things are created. And so without contradiction and without competition, Jesus is the, 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 the sheep. Uh, uh, we're going to think about the work of Jesus Christ on the cross and how he says, my sheep hear my voice and, and I know them and they follow me. And I'd like you to uh, give this thought of the, the sheep owner. They've, they've been purchased, purchased by Jesus Christ with his own blood. You were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. And then what a theme carried out in Scripture as of a lamb without blemish and without spots. So we find the shepherd is the lamb. And the lamb is the sacrifice that pays the price to buy lambs like you and I and redeem us off the slave market of sin. What a... What a wonderful truth. What a wonderful concept. What wonderful imagery is, is plastering our lives and our minds in this. It's, is, is Jesus is the, is the owner because there's a purchasing. And so he cries out with right and with dignity in John chapter 10 in verse 14. He says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine and am known of mine. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And then he talks about I and my father are one. There is no one able to pluck them out of the hand. What a, what a, what a security. What immensity that, that, that touches our life individually and preciously, personally. That God, God owns us. And so this phrase, the Lord is, the Lord is my shepherd, is, is flipped and conversely, uh, uh, I am his and he is mine. Wow. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, and the shepherd, God the shepherd. And so we come into this thought of, of the Lord as my shepherd, and I'd like you to be blessed with the, the immensity of who owns us. I think if we would get a hold of that, it would change our lives. That, 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 that God, our creator, yes, uh, but then there is a, a, a personal owning in an, in an ownership of us. Uh, these are not my hands. This is not my voice. These are not my feet. Uh, this is not my tongue. Uh, this is not my time. My time is in his hands. And I want to live for God because I belong to God. I belong to God. The Lord is my shepherd. Conversely, I am his sheep. I'm the sheep of his hand, the thought then of the Holy Spirit, uh, and I would just think of the Holy Spirit uh, as talking and, and, and speaking uh, into our hearts and into our lives. This is a precious thought of uh, the, I am the sheep of his hand. Uh, this close and wonderful uh, connection with the immense God of the universe is then uh, directing us by the very touch and the very uh, uh, flick of his hand, guiding us. And I can't help but see the precious Holy Spirit, the, the comforter, thy rod and thy staff, they, they comfort me. The, the discipline and the, the speaking of, of God into our lives, taking his word and the Holy Spirit ministering the word of God to our hearts so that we would hear his voice and, and follow the good shepherd and realize who we're following, the God of the universe. I have an illustration for you. And it's a bad illustration. I didn't even want to watch it on TV, but there it was. I was trying to take a nap, and it was on Shark Tank. 
So I perked up my eyes as to who was trying to sell what to the millionaires. And I don't know who these millionaires are, but they're, they're, you know, chewing up these things. And, and so this guy comes in and he's got a little wristwatch and it's a, it's a, it's a zapper wristwatch that helps you, helps you stop bad habits. That's what the wristwatch does. You control it with your phone and you can turn up the zap to a big, big zap when, uh, you, when you do something wrong, it will zap you. And I thought, wow, but they, they didn't bite. The sharks didn't bite on this. They said, this is, you know, just totally, uh, totally wrong. This watch will not work but he had studies shown that if if you zap, so who has to who has to control the watch it was the person who is wearing the watch and and it can be controlled remotely so that i guess somebody else can zap you and you can modify your behavior and quit bad habits by pushing this and if you push it and turn it up hard you will jump with the zap and it will send a message to your brain that you should not continue the activity you're involved in uh, because you're going to get zapped but who has to control it? You have to control it. I thought, wow. So they looked at it, they checked it out, and the sharks spit it out, and, and, and he got no shark uh, to, to um, fund his zapping thing and, and to quit bad habits. If you would just push it every time you tried to bite your nails, you know, you'd have to, instead of biting your nails, take one of your nails and push the button, and the button would zap you. <laughs> oh, don't look at me like that. I'm not trying to make you a uh, uh, bite on this, <laughs> okay? But I thought this, that we don't need a zapper. We've got the Holy Spirit of God in our hearts. We've got the Holy Spirit of God in our hearts, taking the Holy Word of God and speaking to as the talker in our life against the unholy paths of our life. And look out, if you know him and he's in you, the grieving and the quenching and the rod and the staff and the correction and the discipline that he gives as we are his true sheep, his true sons. And if, if anybody who is a true son is not involved in the correction and the discipline, we are all partakers of. And if we're not partakers of his discipline, uh, Hebrews tells us we are not his children. Look out. We got the God zapper. <laughs> Don't step too far out of line. Amen? For that zap can go from soft to very heavy. So heavy that you don't want to experience it. One called the Holy Spirit of God the hound of heaven that would hound his children back to the side of the precious Savior. I don't want to stretch the imagery to the sheepdog. <laughs> I don't know if I have Bible for that. But the precious Holy Spirit of God is talking to us, yea, in a wonderful, flawless way, zapping us. And he's not relying upon us to do it. Amen. That was the flaw that was specked out in the shark tank, and they all spit it out. But, but the Holy Spirit of God can't be spit out. He comes inside of us, and he indwells us. And we are personally uh, indwelt by the Spirit of the living God. And we belong to him, and, and, he, and, and he is our shepherd, and he, he dwells in us. And he zaps us for our good and for his glory. Amen? And we need zapping. Sometimes we need hard zapping. Sometimes we need soft zapping. Just a, in fact, I prefer the soft zapping to the hard zapping. And better to hear his voice. Better to know uh, the stove is hot by precept. 
than by experience. Say, well, I want to learn by experience. No, you don't. <laughs> there are some things you don't want to learn by experience. I want Graceland to learn the stove is hot by precept, <laughs> not by what is that red thing that's glowing so wonderfully. Uh, I want her to learn it by precept, amen. And, and so if we would get into the word of God and allow and welcome the Holy Spirit of God to speak to our hearts through the word of God so that we might hear his voice and know his voice and, and follow him. This is what God wants us to do. And it's the immensity of it all that I speak concerning this. Jesus is the good shepherd that embodies this care and the Holy Spirit ministers it to our hearts in a wonderful, precious way. He is the great shepherd. He is known of his sheep and he is known of mine. And in a, in a precious way, this, this immensity is beautifully brought down into, and, and this is the point I've already been making, but it, it's the point of intimacy, of closeness, of specialness. Yes, we are the object of his creation, but there's a wonderful uh, rebirth and a new birth as this creation has been marred and destroyed by sin. And, and, and Jesus said, you must be born again. And, and there's, a, there's a recreation of God in our hearts as the Holy Spirit of God comes into our life and, and touches us for the glory of God. This is, this is the intimacy the intimacy of my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The Lord is my shepherd. It's the God of peace that brought again the Lord Jesus, that great shepherd from the sheep. Uh, he brought him again from the dead. And it's through that death, burial, and resurrection uh, that we are made through the blood of an everlasting covenant. We are, we are made his sheep. We are purchased. We are, uh, we are intimate with God. We are known of him. On Tuesday, I think it was, I went to the airport. There was a lot of women at the airport. <laughs> but only one got my hug and my kisses and, and my welcome home as I, as I knew this one. And, 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 and into my arms she went as we were reunited at the airport. Uh, this is the, the closeness and the, the intimacy that we have with our great God. We are, we're a sheep as going astray, First Peter chapter 2 says, but now we have returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. This is an eternal type of relationship. He's the, he's the shepherd and the bishop, the owner and the head, the, the one who's in charge of our, of our souls. Wow, we can, we can keep in safekeeping. You've got something very special inside you. I like to say to little children, you know, it's, it's the real you. It's behind your eyes type of thing. And it's hard to explain, but, but our body is, is destined to the grave, isn't it? But the real you is, is not. The real you will live forever, forever. And we need to be born again into the family of God and, and return unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls and have this personal relationship with the living God so that we might be able to cry out too to the God of the universe, the Lord is my shepherd. And he cares in, it is hum, hum, in his immensity. He hung the stars in space and he knows them and he calls them all by name. But in his intimacy, he knows, he knows the minute person, individual. He cares and knows about everything. He knows realities. He knows possibilities. He knows the maybes. He knows the what ifs. He knows all the combinations and all the ramifications of all the combinations of every minute detail of our life. He knows the possibilities when I put my finger here and I touch it to my tongue. He knows what will happen, what is happening, what did happen. He knows what might happen. He knows what will happen. He knows it all. He is intimately involved with the minute details of our lives. Do you believe that? Now, Jonathan Hammer's not here today. 
He's, he's going to be back tonight. But, but I, I, I love that young man. Amen? And, and, and Matthew Keeler's not here tonight. Uh, and I love that, that young man. And, and, and I got an illustration about them. Because, because we all decided to go to the Iron Pigs game. And who, I don't know, names a team, the Iron Pigs. The Iron Pigs, I, I don't know. I don't know who names a team. The, I don't even know what an Iron Pig is. I don't even know what an Iron Pig is. But the Iron Pigs were playing, yes, you guessed it, the Mud Hens from Toledo. Now, I would think the Muddy Pigs would be, you know, a good name. But I got the, the Mud Hens and the Iron Pigs. Uh, and I, I throw out a question. Does, does God care who wins that game? Does God know who, who's going to win that game? Does he care who's going to win that game? Hmm. Let's talk about some of those sheep. Here's, here's a sheep, a couple of sheep. And, and, and I went to this game. Now, it would be a long day for me to be an Iron Pigs fan. I mean, like, diehard Iron Pigs fan. But, but I thought it'd be exciting if, I got, if the guys that were kind of mowing and raking together would all kind of go together. And, and, and so we went to the Iron Pigs game. One, Glenn, not a fan, but excited about going to his first baseball game. Me? Not a fan, but excited to go to the Coca-Cola Stadium and see what all that is like. And then there was an Iron Pig, a baseball, baseball fan. And, and then there was Jonathan, and then there was another baseball, baseball fan. Matthew, he's a baseball fan, isn't he? Yes, yes. And is, does, does God care? Well, this, this game, uh, we found out that, that, that Jonathan is very excited. And I, I want you to think about just, you know, we're excited for Jonathan, okay, at the Iron Pigs game. We're excited that the, um, the Iron Pig mascot, you know, uh, would not just walk by what would walk up to Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was an exciting moment when gifts were given. And, and who got those gifts? Jonathan got those gifts. The game, um, you know, went on to its ninth inning. And, and sadly or gladly, the game was tied after nine innings, which I thought, well, that's wonderful. They tied. No, no, not in baseball. <laughs> not in baseball. And so, so the game um, went into extra innings. Uh, how many extra innings? Well, I thought at like 11 or 12 that maybe it would be over when the muddy pigs got ahead, you know. Um, and, and, and then the stadium was starting to really, really, really empty out. And, and, and then the muddy pigs, no, the mighty, muddy hens got ahead by two. And then wouldn't you know, the iron pigs came up and tied it. So into inning 13 and inning 14 and inning 15, it went. And yes, you guessed it. I inning 15, finally. And, and I didn't know this about baseball, but they ran out of pitchers, but it was because the stadium had emptied out. That, that, that Jonathan, who brought his baseball glove, was able to catch a ball, and he was so excited. Why? Because he's such a good catcher? No, because there was nobody else in the stands. And Jonathan got that ball with Matthew's help, okay? And he got not only one ball, but he got two balls by the end of that game. And I'm thinking, does God care? About the Iron Pigs? I don't know. We'll, we'll let, we'll let you wonder about that, okay? And who won? But does God care about one of his sheep that would be blessed in some precious little personal tiny way? I, I believe that because we were back there hoping, I won't say slash praying, that, that Jonathan would catch a ball because he brought his glove. And, 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 I, and, and, and I believe that this is, this is the intimate and the personal care. And if you can't see it, in God's love shining upon a Jonathan, then maybe you, maybe you can't see it at all. Maybe you can't see it at all. 
But I'd like you to see that today. Do you know, Jonathan, he, he, if you ask him what he wants to be, it's, it's, he wants to be a pastor. He wants to be a pastor. Where do you want to be a pastor? At Crossroads. You want to be a pastor with Pastor Becker? No. Jonathan wants to be the pastor for Pastor Becker. <laughs> As in, I'm out of here, and he's in here. <laughs> and God bless him. Amen? God bless him. And when he gets up here and preaches, he's got to have that ear mic on, and he's got to have it just so, just like Pastor Becker. <laughs> okay? And, and, and what a blessing the last time he spoke. Does God, God care for his little sheep? Yes, he does. Intimately and minutely so. And I'd like you to think about this, this, this immense God of the universe and this little phrase that, that can, can bless your week. It can, it can, it can, it can bless your day today. I pray that it has. The Lord is my shepherd. It can, it can bless your week. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. It can bless your month. It can bless your year. It can bless your decade. It can bless the rest of your life. In fact, beyond that, it can bless the rest of your eternity. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the shepherd and bishop of my soul, and that is eternity eternal and I can I can count unto the well keeping of my soul unto a good and faithful creator a God who created ruined then by sin but recreated in Christ as the gentle shepherd becomes the lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world and he gives his life for the sheep the shepherd becomes the sheep and dies on a cruel cross so that the payment might be paid in full in full so that we might we might I was going to say, we might bask. <laughs> we, we might just bask in the truth that the great God of the universe has care for this little tiny me. I don't understand it. But I believe it with all my heart. And he speaks to me. And he takes his word and he directs me. Every word, every Every thought he's concerned about, he's concerned about every every minute. There are no spare minutes. There are no idle time. There is nothing unimportant to him. And he's, a, he's the Lord, and he wants to be Lord over all of my life because he's the Lord of the universe. He wants to be the Lord of my universe, of my universe.